Thought I'd spend a minute to see if I could get this bolt a little tighter for the handle here. Yeah, seems like it just wasn't tightened. You know, almost every screw and bolt that I've come across on this jointer appears to have not been tightened properly. When I first ran it, I had a lot of vibration and I didn't realize until months later that um, the bolt that held the wheel to the motor, the pulley to the motor had not been tightened. And just honestly, I don't think I've come across one bolt that has been torqued down properly. It's kind of ridiculous, uh, but I don't know. It just seems like everything's that way these days. Okay, so there's a bolt like right about here that, or maybe right here, that uh, on the inside, on the, on, the, on the opposite side of this, and I need to reach in there and unscrew it. So I'm gonna use my wrenches to do that. I'm not sure which wrench does the job, so I'm gonna try a couple of different wrenches, starting at the largest, because it seems like it's a pretty big bolt, and working my way down. That actually might be it. The very first one it seems pretty close. I'll try the one right down from it. That was a 17. Yeah, I think it's a 17 millimeter. So left is going to be that way. Is that right? Yeah. So that way, okay. I don't have to worry about my fingers because the knives are not a problem there. This isn't particularly tight either. It's ridiculous. That actually seems to be tightening it. So let's go the other way. Oh, other way does not work. It must just be a tight thread. I think I got it. Yep, got it. Okay, so that's one. Now, I think there's one on the back side that I have to do, and that one I have to worry about because the knives, the, uh, the rabbiting knives stick out on that side. Get out of here, kitty. Shoo. There's a door in the way back here too. Pulley door. So this one's gonna be coming towards me. All of this just to get these bolts off, and if they would have just cut a slot in the cast iron, I wouldn't have had to lift up the whole top. It's a shame. It's just a poor design. I mean, yeah, how often do you change out the cutter head? So it's an edge case, as we like to call it. But still, it happened. It's an edge case that happened. <laughs> Okay, so these pillow blocks or whatever the hell they are, are loose now. Now I need to get this thing to come out. I think I can just drag it out the back, but I'm not sure. It seems like it's heavy, like really, really heavy. I don't wanna drop it. Maybe if I support it from underneath, that might work. <clears throat> oh, yeah, got it. All right. Uh, uh, wow, that's heavy. Uh, okay. <laughs> Step 18, mark the side of the front bearing block that faces the front of the machine with tape or a felt marker to make it easier to reinstall the bearing blocks later. I don't know why that's necessary because one bearing block has a giant hole in the middle and the other one doesn't, but uh, we'll, we'll try it out here. They don't really have the same shape either. One of them's kind of a half moon and the other one's more of a, almost a full circle. 
But whatever, I'll do what it says. There's my tape. Yay, tape. Carefully slide the cutter head assembly out of the back of the jointer. Step 19, we've done that. Step 20, place the cutter head on a workbench. Step 21, remove the left hand thread hex bolt and flat washer that secure the pulley. Use a pulley puller to remove the pulley from the cutter head, then remove the key. Okay, I do actually have a pulley puller. I bought a set from Harbor Freight one time because I thought, why the hell not? So, let's see if I can take this off. If it's anything like all of the other bolts on here, it's not on there very tight. Get out of there, kitty. Curiosity killed the cat. How are you gonna get out now? Might have to clamp this in a vise. We'll see. Oh, it's the only damn bolt that's on there good in the entire thing. A little bit of a strap wrench. See if we can't make our dreams come true. I wonder if I'm going the wrong way on this. Shit. Bet I am. Yup. Oh man, that's embarrassing. Okay. Well, hopefully I didn't damage it by torquing the shit out of it. <laughs> hey, look at that. Same one. And that dude just comes right off like butter. So easy. It's nice. Nice for something to be easy for a change. There we go. Key is still on the wheel. If I can get it released. Yeah, there we go. So there's our key, still on the wheel. Okay, step number 22. Place the cutter head in an arbor press. Insert a metal rod between the press and the cutter head shaft. And place metal plates between the cutter head and the rear bearing block as shown in figure 13 to support it. Have an assistant hold the cutter head so it does not suddenly drop. Then press the cutter head shaft off of the rear bearing block. Okay, so the bearing block itself is about an inch and three quarters, roughly. It's a little less than that uh, in thickness. So I know that I need to give at least an inch and three quarters gap. Uh, and then the bearing, you know, the assembly itself is like 15 and a quarter, something like that. So altogether, it's going to be about 17 inches. Uh, I don't have any perfectly 17 inch long boards. So um, I'm going to cut a couple to length. I'm really just kind of going to eyeball this. And what I'm going to do, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a stop block right here on the end. That way I can make two cuts. I don't like to mark things if I can help it. Easier to reproduce stop blocks than marking things. All right, let's make these cuts. Okay, so I saw this on uh the Grizzly 8-inch jointer Shelix head installation video. Uh, instead of using an arbor press, you use two 2x4s, and you lift the whole assembly up, you wrap it up in tape, and then you whack it on the top with a uh, dead blow mallet. So that's what we're going to try. So let me get this thing balanced up here on these 2x4s. Seems almost like a two-person job all by itself. Maybe, maybe lay it down. <laughs> that makes more sense. 
So now we're going to tape it so it doesn't come loose. Is taping it really necessary? I don't know. That's what they did in the video, though. I think that's just designed to keep this top part from coming loose. Uh, let me put a little spacer underneath it. I don't want it to fall straight down and with too much force. And they say a four by four piece of wood on top and hit it with a dead blow hammer. So there's our four by four and that's not working. Gotta say, I am not super fond of the fact that that's not going anywhere. Damn it. Well, that didn't work, so uh, I'm gonna try some pullers because I don't have a big ass Arbor Press. This might be an excellent opportunity to go buy a big ass Arbor Press. I'm not denying that. It looks like a reverse threaded nut. It's left. Left hand thread, or uh, whatever. Left direction. I don't wanna try to sound like I'm smart because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Last thing I need is everybody on YouTube going, it's a left hand thread. You're an idiot. Yeah, I know. Just trying to get this thing off, man. Just trying to get this pulley off. Or bearing block, rather. Okay, so I don't have a good point of contact here. Maybe this is why they don't recommend doing it this way, but we'll see if we can get it in the middle, get some pressure on it. I feel like the, the claw arms, at least, have pretty good contact there. So, this is probably a terrible idea, but we're gonna try it anyway. I don't wanna put much more pressure than that on it. Is it doing anything? Does not seem like it is. If I could get it lined up a little better, it might. Ah, this is a terrible idea. Wow, just that easy. That is awesome. That is truly awesome. Woo! There we go. Wasn't sure if that would happen or not. Probably should have had my hand on it. Hey, it works. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> All right, step number 23. Have an assistant hold the cutter head so it does not suddenly drop, then press the cutter head shaft off of the rear bearing block. We just did that. Step number 24. Remove the three cap screws that secure the front bearing block cap, then remove the cap with a standard screwdriver. Okay, let's do that. Whoa. Yep. Remove the hex bolt and flash wa flat washer that secure the bearing to the cutter head. Maybe it's over here. Yeah, there it is, okay. I learned my lesson last time. Comes off righty tighty. Repeat steps 22 through 23 in a similar manner to remove the cutter head from the front bearing block and bearing. So we're gonna have to press this off on the hydraulic press. All right, so now for the other, for the front end, um, I've just got like a, this is like a Harbor Freight punch set that I've got laying around. I've never really used it, but it was kind of fun to play with one day. 
and it looks like it's pretty much exactly the same size as this the uh, the shaft a little bit smaller that's fine i've got these two wooden spacer blocks down here just to keep it from slamming into metal when it comes down all all re-duct taped and everything so we should be ready to go here Let's see what happens i'm a little worried nothing's happening yet let me back that off real quick and see what's going on there maybe just a little more pressure all right, contact. Woo! There we go. Man, it just breaks loose, doesn't it? It's nuts. Hey, Tracy, can you come here and pump this for me? No, you don't have to push hard. Just lift up gently and push down. It's very easy. Keep going. There we go, thank you. That's it.